So this work is uh, the results of a collaboration between uh, our group, the Terras Photonics Group in Lille University, in IEMN, with a small company uh, called V-Micro, V-Micro. Uh, and um, I want also to uh, acknowledge the students that work on, the, on this work, Theo Anot, Louis Thomas, and Christian Nascimento Santos. So, as it was already mentioned, so the Terrace Fine Fried Band is uh, between electronics and optoelectronics. Uh, in electronics, photon energy is very low compared to KT, and uh, in, in the visible range, it's uh, and near infrared range, it's the contrary. So I, I will mainly use the Terrace units, but if you are from uh, another. Uh, community, you have here the conversion in millievi or inverse centimeter. Uh, so in the terrace and fine fried, we have a lot of interaction with matter. We have phonons, uh, which for AV uh, atoms uh, goes down uh, in, in from the mid infrared to the fine infrared. We have also uh, molecular vibration either internal um, vibration of the skeleton of the molecules or phonons in the, in the, in the molecular uh, crystals. We, are, we can have also molecular rotation, mainly in gases, plasma resonance, and cyclotron resonance, for example, in, in, the, in the solids and, semi and the semiconductors. So this slide, I think I should uh, <laughs> skip it because uh, we have seen that a lot of times. Um, this is uh, a view of our setup at the beginning. So we have uh, an aspect um, a microscope since a uh, lot of years now. And I think it was the first one in France. And uh, this is a quite old photo. And uh, so at the beginning, we use it in the mill infrared. Uh, for example, uh, with the Mirkat uh, Daylight Solution QCL, QC laser. And uh, with a typical uh, commercial probe, uh, metallized uh, silicon probes. To extend the, the system in the terrace, so we buy uh, a gas laser. Uh, this one is from uh, Edinburgh uh, Instrument Company. So it's a CO2 laser pump uh, terrace gas laser. Uh, you can have, uh, you can, uh, have uh, uh, several lines between 0.5 and 5 terahertz. So here you have a view of the beam uh, around 2.5 terahertz using a methanol vapor. So we have uh, something like 100 milliwatt at the output of the laser. Um, and then you have to um, put the beam at the input of the, of, of the NEASPEC system. So you lose a lot of power in this uh, process, but uh, we have something like 30 milliwatt at the, at the input of the, of the SNOM. As a detector, we use an indium antimonide QMC uh, hot electron bolometer with a bandwidth uh, larger than 200 kilohertz, and it is cooled with a pulse tube cooler at 3.5 uh, Kelvin. So these are a few examples of Terrace norm image. Uh, I think you already know this uh, famous paper from uh, 2008. Um, and uh, on the right, you, you can see our first uh, image in the Terrace range. It, it was, in fact, I think the first image of graphene layer uh, in the Terrace range uh, with Cantrin uh, norm. So it was done at 2.5 terahertz with a standard probe. Uh, so very short compared to the wavelengths, and uh, so the graphene was etched, uh, and, and uh, so we, we can see the contrast between uh, graphene and uh, SiO2 uh, substrate. So since that uh, time, we have uh, worked a lot on, uh, on uh, terrace probes from, uh, for SNOM uh, with uh, Vmicro uh, company. So this company uses uh, the IEMN clean room. Uh, and they have developed a SOI process, uh, uh, silicon process, in order to fabricate very long tips uh, for several applications. And one of these applications of long tips is uh, Terrace uh, SNOM. So you have here an example of uh, a 70 uh, micron long uh, tip, uh, metallized with platinum. 
And uh, the um, resonance frequency is 220 kilohertz, so not, uh, not very low, um, uh, comparable to, to the, other, the other classical tips. And uh, so you can see on the left uh, image obtained with these uh, tips on a graphene sample that was etched uh, on SiO2. Um, so the topography here, the image obtained at, at 10 microns with the QCL, and uh, the image obtained at uh, 180 microns corresponding to 2.5 terahertz. So you have here a better view perhaps of, of the image. So the resolution is close to the wavelength divided by 2,400. And uh, so uh, we have an antenna effect. So this length is comparable to 0.6 uh, wavelengths at 2.5 terahertz. And uh, as you know, metals are, are quite good conductors in the, in the terahertz range. So we have probably um, a quite good antenna effect on the, uh, with, uh, with this tip, in fact, better than with the standard tips. But these tips are, are quite sharp and they are usable also at the 10 micron range, so you can use the same tips uh, at, both, at both wavelengths. And um, just switching in, on the system, for example, the beam splitter, uh, you only have to change the, the beam splitter and you can switch from mid-higher to, to terahertz. We have in, investigated uh, a typical case for terahertz norm, so a planar uh, terahertz resonator. So it's a split ring, but a symmetrical uh, split ring resonator. You, you can see it as a capacitor here, uh, with two inductors uh, symmetrically placed around the, the capacitor. It's fabricated with gold metallization on silicon or quartz. And uh, we have um, checked that the um, we can move the, the, the resonance frequency of this uh, split ring resonator by, by measuring them with the TDS setup, a Menlo TDS setup that you can see here in a, in a perch box. So you can see a comparison here between simulation and, uh, and measurement. Uh, in the simulation, the thickness of the substrate is not taken into account. This is uh, why here we have on the measurement the fabry perot uh, effect. So this, this, uh, in this case here, so it was tuned to 2.5 terahertz, the frequency of the gas laser. And this one is an example of a detuned uh, um, split ring resonator uh, far from 2.5 terahertz. So the first measurements were, were done on a split ring resonator on quartz, so at 2.5 terahertz. So this, was, this one is a tuned one, and you have here a comparison between a tuned one and a detuned one. So we have clearly a difference between the two, the two images. It's a harmonic two uh, image. And um, so we have also measured um, split ring resonator on silicon. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the image we, we obtained. We can see almost the same thing on this kind of uh, of, of uh, resonator, uh, uh, tune one and uh, detune one here, and here the, the topography. And here you have uh, the result of uh, FDTD electromagnetic simulation. So you can see that we wait for uh, something symmetrical, uh, so a peak of electric field uh, on the capacitor, and. Um, uh, uh, very small field, electric field at, 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 um, on the inductors. Uh, what we can see also is that the image have not the symmetry of, uh, of the electromagnetic simulation. We can see that the lower, um, the lower metallization that we can call the south uh, metallization, north, north and south. The south one is, is darker, uh, even darker than the substrate. Uh, here we can see also uh, the higher harmonics. Uh, we can see that we can have a quite good signal up to the fourth harmonics, which is not so easy to obtain in the terz range. Uh, it's more easy at shorter wavelengths, but in the terz range, it's quite tricky uh, to obtain, so you can, you can see here the signal-nose uh, ratio. Uh, this curve are, are a cut of the signal on the, on the gap, on the, on the capacitor. 
So, uh, in order to interpret uh, the, the dissymmetry of image, um, we tried to do a simulation and experiments. Um, so, we rotate the, the split ring resonator compared to the illumination. So, you can see our sketch of the position of, uh, of um, the split ring. And um, so, it appeared that. Um, uh, this dissymmetry is due uh, probably to the position of the probe when we are collecting the, the power. The probe can be in front or uh, at the back side of the split ring when we are uh, scanning. And uh, so it can be uh, seen as um, a shadowing effect, something like that. But we have to remember that the split ring is quite small compared to the wavelengths. So it's a LC resonator. Uh, few, uh, yeah, 13 micron, uh, something like that, of, of uh, dimension, quite small compared to the wavelengths. And uh, it's more, um, ex more precise to, to view it as an antenna. Uh, and as, uh, we have done some simulations that yeah, can, can confirm that the, the lobe of the antenna, in fact, is modified by the position of the tip. Uh, so the, the lobe can be shifted to uh, away from the parabolic mirror, uh, reducing the, the collected power from the scattered field. On the other side, it can increase the, um, the, 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 the signal. So it explains uh, also why, why it's so dissymmetric. And by rotating the, the sample, we can uh, do something like a reconstruction of, of, of the signal. Uh, this is another example uh, from the literature of the study of uh, split ring resonator. It's not exactly the same shape, but uh, quite similar uh, in the terrace range. So you can see here the image. And uh, they, they see, in fact, almost the same uh, phenomenon of, of dissymmetry compared to, to, the, to the simulation. We have, done, we have done also some uh, measurement of other type of antenna. So it's not a resonant uh, antenna. It's a spiral antenna, which is a very large bandwidth antenna. Uh, but the antenna is not, uh, there is no, no load at the, at the center. So you have, uh, in fact, standing wave or, or along the, the spiral arms. Uh, you can see here the results of, of the simulation. And you can see here the measurement. And we can, uh, it's not perfectly identical compared to the simulation, but we can, we can see some similarities concerning um, standing wave uh, along the spiral uh, arms. Here you have the, the topography. So I mentioned that we used a we used, uh, gas laser to do that. Um, this, this kind of uh, laser uh, comes back from the 70s. So there was, uh, they were invented at Bell Labs. And uh, it, it uses, for example, methanol molecule. And uh, you, you pump a vibrational transition of the molecule, and it creates in, inversion of population between uh, invert, in, uh, excited states. And you have here terahertz emission in a cavity, in a terahertz cavity. Uh, these lasers are quite powerful, because the CO2 laser is a powerful pump uh, laser. But you have to find a molecule that absorb exactly where the CO2 laser emits. And it is itself a molecular laser. So it's not easy at all to find. This is why, generally, when you want to change the frequency, you have to change the gas. And it can be quite compli uh, complicated to, to, to have uh, several frequencies with this uh, laser. So since uh, 2014, we have developed um, a QCL pump molecular laser. In fact, we have fabricated the first one uh, using ammonia, uh, a small molecule. And uh, so you can see here an example of this kind of laser, uh, quite smaller compared to, to the big CO2 one, uh, CO2 pump one. And uh, unfortunately, ammonia transitions are not, are not um, pumpable, <laughs> we can see, by, by the CO2 laser. But uh, because the median fried QCL is con continuously tunable, uh, you can have access to a lot of transition. So recently, we have uh, published a paper uh, that summarizes 
uh, all, all uh, a part of the transition. There is a lot of uh, transition, but a part of the transition. So all the points here are theoretical transition of, of ammonia laser. And all the stars you can see here are transition that we have obtained uh, by pumping with uh, the QCL laser. So you can have transition between 0.7 up to uh, more than 5 terahertz using the same uh, ammonia uh, molecule. So uh, for the moment, this laser is, um, uh, is small power compared to the CO2 pump one. Our record is one milliwatt uh, at one terahertz, but um, in the future, uh, we are quite confident that several milliwatts will be uh, available, and uh, it will be uh, it can be used used for 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 terahertz SNOM. Uh, and also, if you don't use the laser, you can use the QCL to do directly uh, mid infrared SNOM if you want. So in conclusion, uh, we think that uh, IFM plus SNOM is a fantastic tool for Terra's uh, fine fine -like range. So long tips uh, can have more than a decade, decade bandwidth. We can use it both in mini-fried and fine-fried. Signal-noise ratio have, have been improved, so lateral resolution is better than wavelengths divided by 1,000. So we have shown gas laser with hundred of lines uh, in the 0.7 up to 5.5 terahertz range. And uh, uh, SNOM is uh, the preferred um, approach because uh, we think that photothermal is possible, but it's difficult in the terahertz range because absorption is generally lower compared to, to the absorption we have in, in the mean infrared. So application, so visualization of uh, terahertz modes, uh, uh, we have shown some antennas, circuits in the terrace can be interesting, and uh, also material response in the terrace range. And uh, to do spectroscopy, uh, we still have uh, to think about the source and the detector to do at the same time imaging and spectroscopy at each point of the image. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>